Hello, prospective citizens and new citizens to the verse. I'm just a tourist with a frag nav console. And I'm going to be talking today about the Aurora MR starter ship. Uh, it, can it be effective in combat? What can you do with it? And what can you do to make it a little bit more effective and be able to get a little bit more out of it? So the first thing I'm going to mention about the Aurora is it has two size one guns on it. Now, very important here, if you are playing with just a keyboard and mouse, you have two options. The first one is to upgrade to the Mustang Alpha or something else that has gimbaled weapons because the Aurora does not have gimbaled weapons, it has fixed weapons. What this means is that you're going to have to, all you're going to be able to shoot at is what's straight ahead of you and you're going to be trying to control the ship with the WASD keys. You might be able to do something with the mouse a little bit, but you're going to have a really hard time flying this ship using just a keyboard and mouse. So your options are one is to upgrade to a Mustang Alpha for uh, $10 to do the, the ship upgrade, or the other is to buy yourself a joystick. Now, one of these Logitech Extreme 3D Pro joysticks only costs $25 to $35 on Amazon, depending on the day, what the sales are. But uh, me personally, uh, Star Citizen is a flight sim at heart, so why would you want to rob yourself of that immersion? Uh, you can get a joystick for relatively inexpensively. I fly with two joysticks, but I'm just doing one for this video because I figure there's not going to be many people jumping into Star Citizen already on dual sticks. So if you don't have a joystick, they're relatively inexpensive, and this joystick is just fine for starting out, and it'll last you a while. This one I still use in my offhand, and I got a nicer joystick, a Thrustmaster T16000 as my main hand, but for now I'll just be using this one. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the game. All right, so if you haven't played the game yet, this is where you spawn in. This is your easy hat. I'm not going to spend too much time here. I'm just going to try to get to the ship quickly so that this isn't an insanely long video. So you just go out, and basically we're going to find the room where we uh, get our ships in. There's a room kind of towards the center of the station, and it looks like this. This is where you spawn your ships in. Just go up there, hit F, and we are going to select the Aurora MR because that's the starter ship that comes with the starter package. And that's what this video is about. So it says landing pad A8. Don't worry about the A. I'll show you what the A means. Uh, the number 8 is the important number. Just look to the sides of the walls. You got 0 to 4, 10. There's 5 through 8. So just follow the arrows. We go out here to get to landing pad 8. This is what the airlock looks like. And assuming you haven't played with your closet, you should still be wearing your spacesuit. Uh, there's things at the bottom of the screen here that uh, kind of denote that you're in your spacesuit. If you're not, when you do this, you'll die. But uh, chances are, unless you've been playing with the closet, which this happened to me and I died because I didn't realize I wasn't in my spacesuit and I'm rambling right now but we're just getting to the ship right now so here we are up to pad 8 and this is the Aurora MR this is going to be with the default loadout to begin with and then I will go to uh, showing you how to do the upgraded loadouts so this will be the loadout that you would actually be starting the game with so I haven't modified it or anything yet uh, to get in, you can get in on either side. There's just this round door here, and you'll see the enter ship dialog pop up. And you'll see the enter ship dialog pop up. Just hit F. And hit F again, and you'll climb into the ship. And then there's a pilot seat. Same thing, F is your main interaction button. And here we go. Now one thing I would recommend is to map strafing to your hat button on your joystick. In order to do that... Welcome to Wallet Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. You want to go to Options, Key Bindings, Advanced Control Customization. Make sure your uh, joystick is selected over here. And you're going to go to Flight Movement. And you're going to map your strafe up and down and left and right to your hat switch. And that's going to make uh, you much a little bit better at combat, especially against AI pilots, because the AI pilots like to play chicken. Uh, they will ram you, and that will blow up your ship fairly quickly. Maybe not on the first time, but uh, you will get blown up rather quickly. So just strafe to either side, and that will uh, 
reduce the chances of that happening quite dramatically. So make sure to do that. So we will strafe up take to off. Uh, take off. Landing request approved. And now on the bottom left of the screen, you're going to see that it says pre. Uh, that is precision. That's your precision speed. You're going to notice that your speed is uh, just to the up and to the left of that. You'll see that 45 there. That is the speed that we're going, which is 45 meters per second. I don't know what's going on with this thing that's shooting. I'm pretty sure that. So anyhow, what you're going to want to do, there is a... Uh, I already have it mapped to a button, but you'll want to go into SCM, which is which is uh, it means sub cruise mode. It's a uh, it's going to change in 3.0, but uh, it's SCM is what it's calling it now, and that'll be your main cruising speed. So we will go ahead and find something to fight, and I will show you that you can't be effective and not blow up all the time in the Aurora MR. Okay, so here we are, and when you come out of uh, quantum travel, it's going to default you to a slow speed, just wiggle your throttle, and you'll go back up to your normal cruising speed. So here we are, here's this guy up here. Now we're flying straight at him, this is where strafe comes in, so start strafing to the side, and that'll prevent you from uh, playing chicken with him. As a gladius, so this guy might take a little bit longer to uh, kill the default mode out of him. We'll see how we go here. And when I first started out, yeah, I was blowing up a lot, but also I didn't know about a couple things I know about now. In this ship, you don't have to worry about gimbal lock because you don't have gimbals. Uh, but mainly, doing your strafe so that you don't play chicken with the ship all the time. And also adjusting your throttle a little bit can also help so that you can not be doing this whole flyby thing all the time. I need to stop talking so I can concentrate on what I'm doing. There, now we're behind him, so I want to try to adjust my speed so that. It's a little easier if you fight a Aurora as a pirate or an Aurora pirate. Then, yeah. If you're fighting an Aurora, it's easier. The ship's a little bit tougher. You messed up now, Scott. Basically, you can kind of watch how it's interacting with this pip here. There's that smaller little circle. That's where you, you want to put the small circle on it, not the cross here. The small circle kind of predicts where your uh, your blast should be once it reaches him. Great, another player just came in. When a new player comes into the area, the game automatically spawns more pirates. That's going to be a problem, especially if they 
start aggroing on me. Which it looks like that's what's happening here. Oh, and we just got him. Although that might have been another one. I don't the other player got him. I didn't see anyone else shooting. And I don't see any other pirates. Maybe the other player left. If they, conversely, if another player leaves, it will despawn extra pirates. So there it is, that's with the default loadout, and I did take a bit more damage than I would like, but it shows that it can be done without blowing up, even if you're fighting against a little bit of a stronger ship. But let's go and find out what we need to do in order to make the ship a little bit better in combat. What you need to do to make the ship a little better is to get better guns, and the way you do that is by going to Arena Commander and to the multiplayer section. What this is, this is where you're going to earn REC or Rental Arena credit. And using REC, you can go to the electronic access store in order to uh, rent weapons that will be a little bit better for your ship. The best place to earn REC is using Classic Grace. Using those others, you can earn REC, but you're going to spend a lot more time making a lot less REC. So Classic Grace is what you want to do. So we will select the Aurora MR since that's what this video is about. Now, when you go in here, there's times, depending on where you are, the time of day, you might be waiting a really long time for a match. Uh, all you gotta do is select a different region. Uh, this doesn't matter too much because the, the lag's not really much of an issue in racing, so choose uh, whichever region. Uh, there's gonna be players probably playing around the world. I usually have pretty good luck using uh, EU servers. There seems to be a lot of players in the EU for some reason. Uh, but wherever you're at, if you're playing in the evening in the U.S., then the U.S. server's probably going to be fine. If you're playing an odd time of day, or if there's just nobody, after a few minutes of waiting, nobody's coming in, just try using a different region. So we will find a match, and I will talk a little bit about racing and uh, earning wreck that way. All right, so here we are. We are in, and we are waiting for players. Now, for uh, racing, a couple tips. One tip is to make sure you have a button that you can easily get to mapped for boost. What boost does is as you're turning, it gives you more thrust so that you can turn a little bit quicker. The downside to that is you can also black out or red out a little easier, so you wanna be careful with that. Just starting out with racing, don't use afterburner because uh, the way these courses are and the way the, uh, the heads up display is, there's these little, you can see in the center where that ring is at, there's a little, circle, not this circle here, you can see kind of towards the circle, circle. You can see kind of towards the center in the middle of that ring. There's a blue circle that shows you where the next ring is. If you kind of get knocked off course or something like that, it can be really hard to see where the next ring is. So you just kind of have to learn the courses so that you know where to go. But when you first start out racing, it's going to be very frustrating. Don't worry, you don't have to come in first to get points. All you have to do is complete at least one lap, and you'll get uh, rental arena credit once the uh, race is over. Uh, once you get a little bit more familiar, you can use Afterburner. If you earn enough wreck, you can rent other ships that are a little bit better for racing. But for now, we're just trying to get enough wreck scratched together so that we can buy some better guns for the Aurora MR. All right, I had to wait a little bit for that one, do some other things, but we finally got a race going. So one, we'll speed through go. this, and uh, that way it won't be too terribly boring. Check pilot status. Right, so, oh, that's a horrible amount of wreck to earn. <laughs> but there we are. We earned enough uh, wreck, those. So we'll have to play several of these. I'm not going to play several of these. I have plenty of wreck, but you'd have to play several of these to get enough money to uh, buy some better weapons. And so the place to get better wreck weapons is on the Robert Space Industries website. You go to the store, electronic access. This is where you spend your rental arena credits. Now, something that might not be clear if you're a new player is that these ships that you can rent, you can only use them in Arena Commander. You can't use them in the Persistent Universe. So don't waste your wreck renting these unless you try, want to try them out in Arena Commander. What you can take into the Persistent Universe with you is the weapons. Uh, you can also take components, but right now, until 3.0 comes out, there's not much use of these in most of the ships you can't even put these in right now anyway so all we care about right now is just the weapons so if we're going to go into view all weapons and the one that we're going to get for the aurora mr i personally like the 
CF007 Bulldog Repeater. This is a size 1 weapon. They cost 800 rec each, so you're going to need 1600 rec before you can buy these. But you can just add that one to the cart. Here's the specs of the weapon. It's a little bit better than the default gun. has a much more rapid rate of fire. Still size 1. So we'll add that to cart. And you'll just edit your cart, make sure it says 2 in there, hit the green check mark, and you can check out. And after you've purchased a weapon, make sure that you exit the game. Uh, just exit the game, come back in, because the, the changes won't really apply until you restart the game. Now, the best place to put the weapons on the ship is in Arena Commander. You can do it in the universe, but it's really clunky right now until 3.0 comes out. So in, two, six, in, in Star Citizen 2.6.3, use Arena Commander. Any mode, doesn't matter. All we're going to do is hit Select Ship customize and that'll bring up all our ports so that we can change the weapons out. So we're going to change these laser cannons out for the 007 repeaters. And then you want to save changes, apply to ship, and now it should say 007 Bulldog Repeater. Now we can go back and go into the Persistent Universe. Alright, in the ship selector when it says landing pad like A8, B8, C8, it's referring to these struts here. So this is strut C, which I just took off from, and there's also a strut A, strut B, strut C. You don't have to worry about that because you can't access the other ones uh, from anywhere in the space station. You can only access the ones that you're close to. And crash the desktop. <laughs> that sucks. Alright, so here we are. Again, wiggle the throttle to get back up to speed. You chose the wrong part of space to fly through. This time we're fighting against an Aurora. So we're gonna strafe sideways just so we don't beat him head on. You pretend jobs have always got something to prove, don't ya? So again, when you come out of column travel, just give your throttle a wiggle to get back up to yeah, speed. Yeah. And here's a Gladius like we fought the other time. This time we'll be fighting him with the uh, 007 Bulldog Repeaters. quicker with the uh, 007 repeaters and also he kind of cooperated and let me shoot a little more a little more than the last one so there it is the Aurora MR 
you can make it a little bit more effective so that you can uh, blow up pirates a little faster. All right, there is cargo capability, same thing with the Mustang Alpha, but in 2.6.3, the only thing really to do is fight pirates, and there is the uh, one private eye mission where you can do that, but there's really no cargo to do, unless you have a ship big enough to steal a big Benny's machine from the private eye mission, but that's a different video, which I do have. But so there it is, you can be effective in Aurora MR. Hope this was helpful for you, maybe a little bit encouraging, especially if you're like me and you just got blown up over and over and over again. Just keep practicing and you'll get better and you'll start uh, blowing things up. So, just a tourist with the Frank Nav Console and I'll see you around the verse.